Hello, Dr. Peterson. I've been trying to listen to my conscience, but I can't tell the difference between fear, willful blindness, or genuine conscience. Well, the first thing I would say about that is it is quite clear that you are, in fact, trying to listen to your conscience because that's probably the first thing that you discover. So that's a really good question. Okay. Fear. Well, here's a test, and you don't want to do this stupidly. If you think that you should do something, and you think that the reason you might not be doing it is because you're afraid, then you should do it. So that way you can find out if it's fear. You know, I think your question is, well, how do I know my conscience isn't just masquerading as fear, saying, well, you shouldn't do that, but it's rationalizing the real issue, which is you're afraid of doing that. Now, see, here's a reason that you want to tell the truth. And I, I kind of figured this out when I was looking deeply into the Pinocchio story. You know, in Pinocchio, as Pinocchio strives to become real, he, he has a conscience to guide him, but it's Jiminy Cricket, this insect. But Jiminy isn't really a very good conscience. He's a bit dogmatic to begin with, dogmatic and inexperienced. And so it's, it's not like the conscience is an unerring guide. It's like a partner in discovery. And as you move forward in your life and you consult your conscience and you listen to it, then it gets smarter and so do you. But there's a coda there. And this is why I've suggested, part of the reason why I've suggested so frequently in my lectures and in my book, that people try not to lie. See. There are many systems, you have many systems within, let's say, that guide you. And one of those is your capacity for rational thought. And then you have a variety of emotional systems and motivational systems and internal dramas and uh, intuitions and bodily sensations, like lots and lots of, and senses, lots of systems that are guiding you. And many of them operate, you might say, unconsciously, autonomously, uh, instinctively, implicitly, all of that. Now, you pr nonetheless, you program them, like you feed them content, let's say. Just like you feed your body nourishment, you feed them content. And a lot of the content that you feed them pertains directly to your voluntary thoughts and speech and your actions. And then if you pathologize those by lying, so if you say things that you know not to be true, or you don't say things that you know to be true when you need to, which is more common. And if you act in ways that you consider that in, act in ways you consider reprehensible, then you pathologize all of those autonomous systems that guide you. It's like you're programming them badly. You're building an AI system inside yourself, really. And, and in some sense, that is what you're doing that has very bad. It's very bad training data. And so the output it produces will be will won't guide you properly. And so you don't want to pathologize your guidance systems. It's a really bad idea. So that's why you have to not lie. And maybe that's also why you have to say what you have to say. And you have to say it clearly as well. And you have to learn how to do that. So that's one of the ways of getting your conscience straightened out. And then you have to have a dialogue with your conscience. And you might ask, it's like, okay, well, what should I do? Or what should, should I do this or should I not do this? So let's say you're thinking, should I not do this in the case of a temptation? Maybe you have a chance to develop a new relationship, you know, and you're, you're excited about it and apprehensive about it and afraid of it. And you don't know how to sort out all those feelings. And the first thing is you really have to want to sort them out. That's why you have to orient yourself to something that's a genuine up, you know, the, the star above the horizon. You have to really want things to be straight and you have to have thought that through and you have to know what it means for things not to be straight. And really what it means is that you're headed for hell in one way or another. And if you understand that it's enough, maybe it's enough to scare you straight. You really got to think that through. Then you got to think about how much better it would be if you aimed up. And, and that really has to kind of permeate your whole being. And so then you're oriented that way, you're oriented up and you're deciding that it's okay to try to tell the truth. And then you can start to rely on this dialogue with your conscience. But both of you have to learn and you're going to make mistakes along the way. You know, th that's okay. You can say, well, I'm going to try this without being certain that it's right. You can even say, I'm going to say this without 
being certain that it's correct. Like if you're arguing with your wife or your husband or your, or your sister or your father, and you have an idea about what might be going on, you can say, look, here's my idea about what's going on. Um, who knows what that idea might be contaminated with? Like maybe I'm putting it forward just because I'm too proud or arrogant or angry or fearful or whatever. That's possible. Let's see if we can figure that out. But you can offer it tentatively and both have at it. That's what you do if it's a hypothesis, right? You both have at it and see if it's an idea that's worthy of, of keeping. And you do that with your conscience. And then you work, move forward. There's a, there's a technique in behavioral psychology called psychotherapy called collaborative empiricism. So let's say that we, you and I have been sitting down and we decide that you're going to try something new this week. Like maybe you're agoraphobic and you're having a hard time in a parking lot. And so getting out of the car and going to the grocery store. So maybe we say, well, you're going to drive to the grocery store and you're just going to walk halfway to the, to, halfway from your car to the door. And that's good enough for like do that every second day for a week. And then come back and let's talk about it. So that's collaborative empiricism. You're running a little experiment. So you think, well, your conscience is guiding you towards something. You take a tentative step in that direction. And then you check and see, well, you know, did what I wanted to have happen occur as an outcome? That's the crucial question. And that's the crucial question for behavioral truth, right? That's the pragmatic perspective. Did what I want to have happen happen as a consequence of my framework of interpretation and my action? If the answer is yes, then I have not invalidated it, right? That's, that's the pragmatic philosophy in a nutshell, and it's, it's very, very smart. So you have a dialogue with your conscience that never ends, and hopefully it gets wiser, and you get wiser. And that's the dialogue that Jung talked about between the conscious and the unconscious, between your, your fantasy life, say, the life that's sort of underneath you as a conscious being, like you, the life that's part of your biological platform, the biological platform that somehow miraculously gives rise to your consciousness. You have a dialogue with that. We're always in dialogue. We're always in dialogue, right, with everything. So, pursue that.